Hey Botube, it's Mickey and it's Vita Day 11 and today I'm here with a kind of fun video. I am doing a unhaul of some books that I have been carrying around with me for a very long time. After um, reading Harry Potter and the Cursed Child, I started thinking a whole lot about like nostalgia and how that like sort of affects the way that we look at things and how it can make it hard for us to let things go. And I have, um, several years back after I had um, left home to go to college, my grandmother was cleaning house. She was trying to get um, her house together and she took all of my books that were still at um, that I still had at home and she put them outside on the street for the bulk man and I came home and I saw them out there and I was like what are you doing she's like I'm getting rid of them they, she's like she's like, I'm not keeping them in my house and I'm like well, what I was like those are really good books and she was like well you got to do something with them so I packed them all up and I took them with me and I've been carrying like a vast majority of them with me um, from apartment to apartment from place to place as I've been moving around um, since like my early 20s and so I um, have several books from my teenage years that I've been keeping and I keep saying I'm keeping them because I say I'm going to read them at some point but I know a that nine times out of ten I am probably never actually going to read them and B, even if I were to read them I really suspect that I wouldn't like them um, I think that I've probably outgrown a lot of these books by now so I'm gonna unhaul them I'm going to take them and give them away to a nice home where people who might actually be able to appreciate them can um, see them. So um, the shelf, I have this, so this is basically the unhauling of my nostalgia shelf, which is usually this shelf back here. I'll take a picture of it and show it to you guys because um, I don't feel like moving the camera right now. Um, but here are some of the books that are on the shelf. Almost all of them are series because um, like lots of teenagers, I was obsessed with series. So the first series that I want to talk about is the Daughters of the Moon series. Um, I, when I was a kid, when I was a teenager, I really, this, this whole video is just hella embarrassing, I really liked the show Charmed. Like, I was obsessed with the show Charmed. Um, I had like the biggest girl crush on Alyssa Milano, and I just thought it was really cool, the idea of these like badass women who could, who had like magical powers, and then they also had to try and have like regular normal lives at the same time. Um, I thought it was great. And so I um, picked up this book series because I thought, cool, this looks like Charmed for teenagers. So this is why I picked this up. And it kind of is, I guess. It's about a group of girls who are the daughters of the moon goddess. Like, yeah, something like that. The daughters of the moon goddess. Like the moon goddess came down and had kids and left them on earth for some unknown reason. And these are like their daughters. Each book is dedicated to a different girl and they're trying to run away from this like dark force called the Aatrox I think which is like the force of darkness I guess I don't know I don't particularly even like young I don't particularly remember this being like really good like at all to be quite honest though I will give it credit for being probably one of the most diverse series that I read in my own um, childhood um, they had like I said each book has a different character who leads it and two of the characters were Latina um, I can show you one of those covers super fast if I can find it like yeah here one of the like girls two of the girls are Latina so um kudos to Lynn Ewing for that and yeah I got like to the fifth book in the series and then I stopped reading it and I don't know how it ends and I don't think that I will enjoy these if I read them now so I'm probably going to give these I have the first five books so I'm probably going to give these away to the library because I don't know they're in great condition though because they're hardcovers um can't really say the same about a lot of these other books that I have over here so the next book that I am unhauling is a book by you probably may not know the series but you do know the author or kind of know the author and that is the orphan series by V.C. Andrews oh this is really shiny I might not be able to hold this up the whole time um so this was written probably by a ghost writer by B.C. Andrews because it was published I think in the like 90s so obviously it was not written by B.C. Andrews herself but this was basically a series that was dedicated to a set of orphans who were living in an orphanage all, all female all girls and um, each book is dedicated to one of them so this book is dedicated to Crystal there was one for a girl named Butterfly I can't remember the other girls names um, and then there was a it, the last novel in the series was like it was called Runaways, and it was about all four girls and them running away from the orphanage and the adventures and crap that they get into. So, like most V.C. Andrews novels, this is full of, like, 
horrible like sexual taboos um i believe this girl crystal is like adopted by a woman who's like trying to get find her own like mini me so she's kind of like she tries to like turn crystal into her and then i think her husband starts paying like undue attention to her like ugh, it's really bad but little me loved this freaking series like she really loved it like i bought it i have like the first i had like two of the books in the series and had every intention of getting all of them i might check out the rest of them from my library but like yeah this is bad i'm definitely getting rid of this though there's a part of me that really wants to check out the runaways novel from like the library out of like sheer curiosity because i'm like what happened i can't remember what happened in it besides the fact that they run away so um yeah that'd be interesting the next thing i've got is a really popular series that you guys probably already know about and that is the gossip girl series by cicely von zigazar zigazar i don't know if i'm saying her name right so again a favorite tv show of mine when i was a teenager was the oc i freaking loved the oc up until it jumped the shark and killed off one of his main characters for no reason but before that i was the biggest fan of that show and was just like obsessed with it and like the second i remember when the first season the finale of the first season like i sobbed at the end of the first season of the oc it was ridiculous i want to go back and slap young me and say what is your problem like these are fake people like extremely fake people and you i but i was like super upset about it you would have thought like my pet dog died or something like it was insane i was just obsessed with that show and so for the time period in which that show was not airing i wanted to read something that was similar to it and so i thought this is about a bunch of rich white people which the oc is also about a bunch of rich white people this kid from chino goes to live with these rich people in orange county and drama ensues and so i was like it's the same thing it's not but i'm in my brain it was also like there's a the two of the main characters in this there's a blonde and a brunette and the same thing was in the oc so i was like yeah it's the same so i started reading the gods of girl series and um to be fair i actually am thinking about keeping this book and giving away the rest of the series i think i have like the whole series except for maybe like the last two books um but i think about giving away this book i mean keeping this book because i actually think that this series is uh deserves more credit than it than it's given um i think it's really funny i think this series is hilarious it was funny to me when i was reading it as a kid and i opened it up and i read a little bit of it um yesterday and i was like yeah this is kind of funny um it's so over the top the storylines are so over the top the characters are so ridiculous the situations everything is so over the top that i i just really believe that it's done on purpose i think zigzag is really smart and she was just doing this in a very like tongue-in-cheek sort of way um i remember i avoided watching the tv show when it first came out because when i saw the previews and stuff it looked like it it looked like it was taking itself way too seriously like this book it's not serious like it's not something to be taken seriously and i felt like the tv series looked like it took itself a little too seriously um sometime earlier this year i actually did watch some of the tv series i was really sick and i just wanted something that i could watch that i wouldn't mind falling asleep on and I, it wasn't that bad actually um so but yeah i can't i'm not gonna keep all of these books though they're just taking up space on my shelf i mean even if i were to at some point reread this one the chances of me rereading the whole series is like slim to none so probably gonna give the whole series away but i might keep this specific book um if you don't know the gossip girl series it's about a bunch of like rich kids in new york who um i don't know that's pretty much it they like they're a bunch of rich kids in new york they go to like some upper prep school thing and there's like drama between these this group of like best frenemies it is these two girls who like they sort of get along but they don't really <laughs> so then the next book that i'm unhauling is catalyst by laurie house anderson now speak by laurie house anderson is one of my favorite books of all time and to me it still holds even now now that i'm not a teenager anymore i've reread it since i've been an adult and i think it still holds up i just think it's a fantastic book it has an amazing narrator and i just really really love it um this was her second novel after speak and i was really really disappointed by it um it felt like it was trying too hard to be kind of like speak but not quite and actually i have yet to read another book by laurie house anderson that i have loved as much as i love speak so um i'm giving this away it's about a girl who like she's like straight a student um i think she's a runner and she's just this person who like wants to do everything perfect and i think she starts having like panic attacks and stuff because she just isn't doing things right and then some like strange girl a girl that's like completely different from her moves into i think into her house yeah she moves into her house and sort of starts breaking past that shell and exposing some of her like weaknesses and all this kind of stuff and i don't know 
I haven't read it since I've been an adult. It could be that younger me just didn't get it, but um, I don't know. I guess if I really get the urge to read it, I could just check it out from the library. I don't want it to stay in my house, taking room up on my shelf. So I think I'm going to get rid of this. And then this last group of books, I'm actually not going to get rid of these, but I just want to show you guys that I have them, and especially if you have them because I just think that they're funny. And they are written by the author that made me a reader, and that author is R.L. Stein. Um, love, 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 loved the Goosebumps series as a kid and read it all up into my, all up until I was in like probably in middle school. And then in middle school, I kind of felt like I was a little bit over Goosebumps. Um, and I never got into the Fear Street series for some reason. Like it just never appealed to me as much as Goosebumps did. Um, but I did get into the Fear Street Seniors <laughs> series. And these books have been through some stuff. So please don't say anything about how bad the condition are of these books. Um, but yeah, the Beer Street Senior Series, basically the premise behind it is that the Shady Side Senior, Shady Side High Senior Class is cursed. Um, some curse got placed on them at a party in like the first book, and ever since then, um, somebody has died. In every book, someone like dies. And the, like, the fear is that, you know, everybody, like the question of course is like, who will survive until the end of the year? And so uh, these are like all over the place, like these are books. 11, 4, and 6. So um, I didn't own a lot of these, actually. I borrowed most of them from my best friend, Stephanie, and we were, like, obsessed with it. But, like, I really... The nostalgia I feel for these this series is really strong to the point where I don't think I'm going to be able to um to get rid of it. Like, I really don't. Um, so I'm going to show you really quickly. I'll show you the book. Like, in it, in the beginning of the books, they have, like, the yearbook. It's, like, Shady Side High yearbook. And then, like, you look through it, and then there's, like, rest in peace, you know, people, are those who are dead. And I, like, I remember just loving looking at these books and seeing, like, who's going to survive? Who's not? And then, like, the, they have, like, little quotes. Um, like, Kenny Klein's quote for his yearbook is, look before you leap, which is all of these things are always, like, a little bit a foreshadowing of, like, the future. Um... Of future events and stuff and like I don't know I was like obsessed with these and even when I tried to read them I read some of it yesterday and they're not really good but I still kind of want to keep them especially because I can't find them anywhere like I tried to see if they were in my library um and they're not in the library like I don't know if this like was this I thought it was popular um made it through the 12 books but like it seems like it wasn't a super popular book series so I don't know. There's a part of me that want to keep these. They, they're very small, so it's not like they take up that much space. I kind of want to get the whole series um, just to have it. Like, I don't know why. But anyways. <laughs> but yeah, this is the Fear Street Senior series. You guys probably need to just try and convince me to give these up. Like, that's what I think you guys should do. You should convince me to not keep these because, well, yeah, they're not good. But I like them still. The nostalgia is super real. Super real for these. So anyways, those are all a bunch of books from my adolescence. Books I probably read between the years of, like... 14 to like 19 so um 19 20 ish so yeah i've come a long way um <laughs> so let me know what type of things we used to read as a teenager um or what are some things that you might be embarrassed to talk about having had in your library because these are kind of embarrassing and i will um talk to you guys soon enjoy your day